Number one gives us a sequence defined by f of zero. So the, the zero term is three. And then any subsequent term is two times the previous for n is greater than or equal to one. Write a definition of the nth term. So for this one, we have repeat multiplication. So when we have this, okay, then you're going to take your initial term, okay, so your f of n is going to equal your initial term times that growth factor, okay, to the n. So this will always be your initial term or the initial value, meaning your f of zero term that they give you. And then you're going to take your growth factor or what you're multiplying by, okay, the repeated multiplication, and then to the n. Number two, we have a geometric sequence that starts um, with 20 and then 60. Define G recursively for the nth term. So we know it's geometric. So we know that we're doing repeated um, multiplication or division. In this case, we're multiplying by 3. Now when we're doing recursively, that's when we define the first term. Okay, so G of 1 equals 20. And then we do N in terms of the previous term. So we're going to do 3 times our previous term. And this will be for any term um, greater than or equal to 2. Number 3, a geometric sequence G starts at 500 and has a growth factor of 0.6. Sketch a graph showing the first five terms. Okay, so off to the side, I'm just going to make a table of value of the first five terms. So we're going to start at, um, so this will be our term number and this will be our term. So our first term is 500. Then we'll multiply 500 by 0.6 and that gives us 300. Okay, so we're just multiplying this by 0.6. That's what's giving us the 300. So then we'll multiply 300 by 0.6, and that's going to give us 180. Multiply 180 by 0.6, and we'll get 108. And then multiply 108 by 0.6, and we'll get 64.8. So now when we go ahead and graph this, um, we want to graph it up to 500. Okay, so our terms are going to be up to 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now we want to go up to 500. So I'm going to go 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. So our first term is at 500. Our second term is at 300. Our third term is at 180, so not quite 200. So this is 100, 150 is halfway, so kind of halfway between 150 and 200. Our fourth term is 108, so just above 100. And then our fifth term is 64, so a little above halfway. So you can see it starting to curve down. And so that would be the first five terms. Number four, an arithmetic sequence has an A sub 1 value or a first term of 4 and a second term of 16. Explain or show how you would get the 15th term. Okay, so we know that the first term is 4 and the second term is um, 16. So if we said that our A sub um, 0 term is 4, Okay, then we could say that our a sub n term is going to be, um, and what did we do here? So we added 12. Okay, so then we could say that our, our a sub n, if we define this as the zero term, would be 4 plus 12n. 
Okay, if you define this as your zero to oh shoot the In number four, they give us an arithmetic sequence and it gives us our first term is four and our second term is 16. And it wants us to explain or show how we would find the value of A sub 15. So a couple options here. So you can see that in this one, you can figure out your um, common difference, which is by adding um, 12. Okay, so we're just gonna plus 12 each time. So to find the 15th term, okay, you could plus 12 14 times because they give us the first term. So the second term, we'd add it once. Third term, we'd add it twice. Fourth term, we'd add it three times and so on. So you could just add it 14 times, okay? You can also um, set up a recursive formula if you wanted, okay, where your first term is four. Okay, so then you're, if you wanted to set it up and, sorry, not be recursive because then we're just doing this same thing. Okay, you could start with your first term and then you could add 12 and let me move this because this isn't going to fit. Whoops. Okay, so let me move this down here. So we could take our first term and then we could add 12 one fewer times than the term number. Okay, so then if we wanted to find the 15th term, we do 12 times 15 minus 1 or that 14. So you could also write out an equation like that. This next one is a geometric sequence, and it has the um, zero term as 4, okay, and then the first term as 16. So how would you find the 15th term here? So now they're giving us the zero term. So that's our initial value. So we'll take our initial value times the growth factor. So what is the growth factor? What number do we multiply to get the initial value to the first term? So this is multiplying by four. So we'll take and multiply by our initial, or sorry, our growth factor to the n because this one defined our zero term. So then we'll take initial value, growth factor to the N. A piece of paper has an area of 96 square inches. Complete the table if it's folded in half N times. Okay, so we're going to fold it in half. So the area is going to be half of 96, which is 48. Fold it in half again. The area is going to be 24. Fold it in half again, and the area is going to be 12. So what would um, define A for the nth term? So we've got A sub n. We're going to take our initial value, okay, which is the zero term, so 96. And then we're going to multiply it by our growth factor, in this case, 1 half, and then to the n power. then what's a reasonable domain for this? And so you can only fold paper so many times before you it gets too thick and too small to fold. And so that magic number is, it's gotta be less than or equal to seven times. It's really impossible, okay, or nearly impossible to fold a paper more than seven times. So a good domain would be between zero and seven. Number six, here is a um, growing pattern. Describe how um, the number of dots increases from stage one to stage three. So here we've got two dots in stage one. We've got four dots in stage two. And we've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dots in stage three. So they're doubling, okay? So it's doubling each stage. B, write a definition for a sequence so that D sub N is the number of dots at stage N. 
Okay, so I'm going to do this down here. So D sub N, okay, would equal, and now if we've got two dots, let's do our zero stage. Okay, so this is stage one. This is stage two. This is stage three. So if we did this pattern backwards, we could figure out that stage zero, so divide by two, would be one. Okay, so our initial value is one times our growth factor was doubling each time. So this is just going to be our um, function is equal to 2 to the n. Okay, you don't even need to have that 1 because it's not going to change anything. So you could just say um, your function is equal to 2 to the stage number. Okay, so if it's in stage 1, it's 2. Stage 2, it's 2 squared of 4. Stage 3, it's 8. Stage 4, it would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16, and so on. So is this geometric, arithmetic, or neither? So we know it's geometric um, because it's multiplying each time. And then number seven, a paperclip weighs um, 0.5 grams and an empty envelope weighs uh, 6.75 grams. Han adds paper clips one at a time to an empty envelope, complete the table. So we see that he starts with the empty envelope, which is that 6.75 grams, how much the envelope weighs. Now he's gonna add in a paper clip each time, which is 0.5. So he's gonna add 0.5 each time. So he's going to be at 7.25, add another 0.5 and be at 7.75, add another 0.5 and be at 8.25. Would it make sense for us to do W of 10.25? So would it make sense for there to be a 10.25 here? And no. Okay, because we're only adding whole number paper clips. Okay, we're not adding fractions of paper clips.